In late May of 2015, a woman went to a routine doctor's appointment in which she was told she needed to prep immediately for surgery. You see, an organism living symbiotically had been discovered and it needed to be extracted then and there. Now this organism weighed over five pounds and was thriving. So she prepared for surgery and had the organism extracted. Now here's the interesting part about this story. I, as a collector of oddities, happen to have the organism with me now. And I'd be more than happy to show you. Once you like and subscribe, you rube. When you look at Barker's Row by Overworld Games, you're immediately invited into the world of the macabre, the curious. Uh, not so much a world, I guess, as much as a cheap circus tent in which uh, cardboard grandstands are filled with little wooden rubes. Rube, an awkward or unsophisticated person, or a naive or inexperienced person, or a country bumpkin. Now with the goal being to fill your grandstands with these rubes, you take on the role of being a carnival barker. You throw out superflowers and over-the-top definitions for what your shows are. The game has four different suits as well as a number of wild cards. On a player's turn, they take one of the three face-down cards in Barker's Row and add it face up to the midway. The cool thing about these cards is that the suit is displayed right on the back of the card. So you know what type of card you're flipping over, but not what the value is. This allows you to plan a little based on the attractions you have in your hand, without knowing for sure just how much it's going to add to the total. Since you don't know what attraction types your opponents are working on, this can be a little risky as you may just be setting them up for success. After flipping one card onto the midway, the option to score an attraction is available. This is done by taking cards from the midway with the matching suit of the attraction you want to play. The numbers in the card taken must amount to the player's current level on the strongman tower. Each time an attraction is scored, a player bumps up a level. So while your first attraction will require only a total of four from that suit, the next will require five, and so on, maxing out at ten. Each scored attraction attracts two rubes to the grandstands and has a one-time use ability that can be played on your turn. Once things pick up and you have a number of attractions in front of you, then things start to get a little bit interesting. Each attraction has that one-time special ability that really has the power to change the course of the game. They're all very powerful. And once you take your initial step of flipping one card into the midway, depending on how many are there, you can exchange those cards on the midway for as many attractions in your hand as you'd like. On top of that, you then have the option to play as many of the one-time use powers from these attractions as you'd like. Ideally, these are going to trigger off of each other and you get combinations where you're bringing in rubes left and right, you're lowering your stance on the strongman tower, and ultimately just making really big, powerful moves. Now, except for those combos, you run into the elephant in the room, and not the big freaky one that everybody's paid to see. In terms of weight of a game, this is about as simple a game as a gateway can get. Now, you do get a little bit of flavor and a little bit of action with those one-time use power cards, especially if you have a number of them, but know going in that this is not a heavy game. Now, as always, Knowing that going in will help you temper your expectations on what you're looking for in this game. And if you have the correct expectations, what you're in for is a real treat in terms of aesthetics. This dark and macabre theme is really attractive to a lot of people. I personally really enjoyed some of the artwork and especially the rubes and the 3D grandstands. Sure, the gameplay didn't necessarily knock my socks off in terms of interesting decisions or complex actions, but what it did do was really impress me with the way it looked, the table presence, saying, look, this is an entry game. This is a game that every, anyone can play and it can look great on the table. Thematically wise, it even encourages actual barking. When you score an attraction, you're taking cards from the midway. Each of those cards has an adjective, and so you read them off one at a time, explaining that you have the horrific, the magnificent, the incredible Claude the Claw. And if you get really into that theme, you can have a really good time playing this. Now, Barker's Row also suffers from similar issues that games of this weight has. There's the runaway leader issue that's partially resolved by the strongman mechanic. There's uh, the randomness of the draw. You don't know what numbers are going to come up, but honestly that's part of the appeal, especially in a game like this. I briefly want to mention the fact that going into this I had slight concerns about the whole circus freak mentality and theme of the game. It's something that I'm a little bit uncomfortable with given the sordid history that um, carnivals and circuses had uh, even up till today. However, I was glad to see that the art direction and the theme went a more fantastical way than what our sordid history has. Like taking everything that I've said into account, what you're left with is admittedly a light gateway game. Now that being said, 
Light gateway games are fantastic for certain occasions. Add to that, you've got beautiful aesthetics, really interesting components, and a theme that just really oozes through every aspect of the game. And it's something that you may want to consider, and something that I really enjoyed being able to play with. That's right, I forgot. I promised to show you the hideous organism uh, that was collected that day. And so without further ado, here is my prized member of my collection. He's hideous. Are you hideous? You can talk? <laughs> <laughs>